in life we all take time to put together a place to stay. That place to stay is where we find shelter from the storms of life, not only from the weather elements of our world, but also from the difficult times in our life that come about from the hands usually of other people who have lied about their rights in our lives. You see, every human being has the right to make a living, regardless of how they choose in those moments of time, based on their circumstances and situations, to make a living. I had been spending quite a little time looking through dumpsters, pulling out absolutely stunningly beautiful, usually, and perfectly clean and mint condition items to sell for cash so that I could produce for myself some new clothing. Every time I would put things together, I would sanitize it, I would clean it up, and prepare it for doing one of two things, to either sell on my own accord, or to provide to a family that had been sort of helping me a little bit. I'm trying to encourage a young man to do his work as a young man, which is to find a career path that will allow him a longevity of life. He's 35. He's in the middle of that age and stage where you better get into a career or you'll be forever in poverty. In my lifetime, I'm older now. I've matured a great deal through all this process. I know that I have because I am less unstable, if you will. I am less quick to anger. I am less quick to rage. But yesterday, some monster decided to take my property that I'd set very carefully in a corner of a facility where no one was bothering it at all, except for one maintenance person who knew I was there, and literally take it all and take it away. I had just taken to myself some memory foam so that I wouldn't have to sleep on the concrete when I slept in the openness of my concept of traveling. You see, I'm traveling because someone committed identity theft on my life. Someone thought they had the right to infiltrate my health care, infiltrate my legal records, infiltrate my history and education, and infiltrate my life to destroy it. Some person of a religious right thought they were doing God's work, but here's the reality. Jesus has never said in any aspect of the Bible or any aspect of the Dead Sea Scrolls or any aspect of the Quran that you are to go and harm a life in the name of the Lord. This is where the Muslims often get it wrong. The truth is, no one says go and be a jihad and harm a person's life in the name of God. No one says blow people up in the name of God. No one says create war and lack of peace in the name of God. Yet people do this every single day. Every single day I see women out of control trying to be in control of a man's life that does not have any rights to do so. You see, people do that regularly. Even yesterday, I had to go and pick up my staff that I use to comfort me and to keep myself safe and to help me to walk when my legs don't work well or when at my age I struggle to stand up because someone interfered with my medical rights and ruined my health care. Even someone here in Illinois thought they would take me for two weeks without my consent and lie about it, to investigate me, to do their own thing. That was immoral, it was illegal, and I know who those two people are. And when it's time, the Lord will take their lives in ways they will never get out of in prison. But the truth is that the man who what, thinks he knows me, and I've never met before in my life, keeps trying to talk to me and tell me what to do with my property. I simply walked away from my property because I chose it was a safe moment to do so. To go basically ten yards away or less to pick up the staff that I left outside of a facility where I go shopping. I often leave it so that it's not a bothersome thing to a manager or any immature employee who doesn't understand what homelessness is and doesn't understand how an old man might use a cane or a staff to walk. It's not exactly like Lord of the Rings, but it's sort of like that. In my life I know the magic of the Lord, but most people do not. They don't because they never listen to that Holy Ghost saying, Stop doing this. Stop lying. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to others. Pay attention to your life. In my lifetime, I can record all the recordings in the world, but if no one that's important to me listens, what am I supposed to do about that? I have siblings, late siblings, who literally never listened. Always felt they were older, always felt they were wiser, always felt their life experience made them better at doing my life than me. And that was the lie they told themselves, a rights violation. They don't live in the day-to-day -day of my life. They didn't live in the day-to-day -day of my relationships. They certainly didn't serve in my Japanese language program. And they most absolutely did not network with me in the communities in which I built a networking group. 
called the Business Strategy and Technology Forum that lasted for a good three years. It might not have created for me lots of income, that organization, but it created for me relationships. But what was amazing is that when I lost my wife and I told a handful of people who had been long-time loyal members of that educational group that nobody did one damn thing to help me. Not one thing. I kept having an insurance broker, who was my insurance broker, tell me that she had been in mental health. I don't give a shit if long ago your life was in serving in mental health. You are not a mental health worker now, and it's immoral and illegal for you to pretend as if you understand someone's life just because you served at one time at one of the community facilities. That doesn't give you license now to talk to anyone about their mental health or talk to anyone about their life. Your job as my insurance agent is to make sure that I get my bills on time, that they are paid without problem, and that you're not fucking my privacy rights by talking about me. I had a guy who was supposed to handle my medical insurance that I knew from long ago, from college days. But instead of protecting my privacy rights, he started talking about my privacy and my medical things with people that we once went to college with. That was a violation of the law. When I told my sister, who was friends with him, about this, she supported him instead of me and my right to privacy. When I say these things, I'm talking about real experiences that have happened to me, not to you. But what about in your life? When I tell my story, I'm encouraging you to think about your life. Have you put enough money away from retirement? Do you have the millions in the bank you need? Are you going to be working in the late years of your life or struggling in the late years of your life looking for food pantries like many young men and women don't think about today? When I talk to young people in their 20s, they start to put their lives together. They start to plan. They start to do things differently. I don't know if it's a gift that I have. I don't know what it's about. But there's always some monster who thinks he's got rights to listen to what I'm doing, to record what I'm doing, or to interfere with what I'm doing. There's always some liar in the hood who thinks they have rights to my life. And usually they're a lying black man or a black woman who thinks they have rights to my life. I have one woman who's a bus driver who's given me almost $70. Why did she do that? Was that out of the love of God that she did that? Was that out of a recognition of a man needing to eat and needing clothing that fit him right? What do we do today with impoverished is really important. This health crisis was put about by the politicians to teach people a lot of things. To teach people to stop spending, for one. To teach people to start regarding human life more, for two. And to start showing people that they can kill off anybody they damn well want to with the illnesses that are being produced in the labs across the land. The Lord God is not pleased about these scientific discoveries that are trying to harm people's lives. What he expects his intelligence that he puts in the human soul to do is to find ways to cure illnesses, not find ways to give illnesses. These MI2 movies with Tom Cruise and other type of people like Colin Firth are teaching us about the technology and the medical rights violations of the world. They are real things that go on because people are monsters. They want to be powerful in someone's life that doesn't have the right to do it. What I mean by human rights is that there are 27 tenets of the International Human Rights Declaration that our nation is also supposed to regard even within our own land. But people don't do that. They constantly are giving advice of what a person should eat or what a person should do with their life. They're constantly doing things most often without permission. With regard to the man who was outside of the Walgreens the other day, he told me not to leave my baggage. And I thought, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do with anything on my property? I ignored him completely because at my age, I don't need him in my life, I don't want him in my life, and I don't like him. There's something about him that the Lord says, do not engage with him, period. When I get that Holy Ghost message, I stay away. I listen all the time to what the Holy Ghost tells me because it keeps me clothed, fed, and finding amazing things. Even within a bag in the middle of nowhere, I can find it because the Lord leads me there. But there's always some monster in a company somewhere who thinks they've got rights to hoard over me, to lord over me. So when I return to my stash that I had put things lovingly aside for a family that's been helping me and found all my things except my bat and an electronic cash counting machine left, I am livid. I had to hunt up my things and found that some of them were thrown in the trash Things that I had beautifully cleaned up, blankets, towels, etc. that need to stay sanitized were thrown in a filthy trash can. My electronic cords, I don't know where they are. They were probably stolen by some young person because I've seen four kids, four black kids, running around trying to steal bicycles in this college town when all this started to happen. 
Who the hell is their mentor that tells them that they have the right to steal one thing from someone on a college campus? We have a real problem where the impoverished think that they are Robin Hood, that they're stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. I'm not stealing anything. I'm procuring things legitimately out of a trash can that have been left. I've even had loving fathers walk up to me and say, Hey, I've got this food here, and we're just going to throw it away. Would you like it? Because they know that I'm going through the trash. They recognize the importance of life. They recognize that humanity needs to be fed. But I don't eat a lot out of trash cans because of the lack of sanitation, for one, and the non-wish to become ill. Because people who are ill throw things away because they think it's made them ill. I will only eat what the Lord says I may eat. What about you? Have you submitted to God? Have you listened at all to what I've been saying? Or are you so busy living your life in the moment right now with your technology as the intermediary between you and other people that you don't recognize that those social media companies are using intelligence now? Even Google, even YouTube are recording our voices so that they can socially engineer who we are and pretend to be us by taking our voice imprints and slewing them together and editing them together. They could have an entire conversation with someone on the telephone and that person would never know, and I've experienced that. It's immoral and it's illegal to represent someone else that is not you. The Lord is the Lord my God. Who is God in your life is up to you. Whether you have a faith is up to you. But I can tell you the Holy Spirit is not pleased with these people who mostly run around thinking they've got a right to do something for someone. Yesterday I was sitting outside one of my favorite little places that is very kind to me. And a Chinese woman walked up to me and tried to hand me masks. Why would I choose to select and receive masks out of someone's trunk for free from someone I don't know? It's foolishness. It was a waste of masks. When I explained to her that I didn't believe in the mask and the face mask because of my experience living abroad where they have illnesses and other things and they wear masks and they have for years, she didn't get it. Also, I can't breathe with them on, so why would I wear them? You see, in life we have moments of time to understand a person's life, but she wasn't willing to walk up and say, Hey, I noticed that you're sitting here. Is there something I can do for you? She just presumed that I needed a mask. I didn't need a mask. I didn't want a mask, and I felt stupid having to receive them, but out of graciousness and humility, I did. I ended up throwing them away, because I don't need someone I don't know trying to give me something. I am perfectly capable of commandeering what I need for myself. But here's the problem. It began this entire conversation that someone thought they had the right to touch my property, period. You see, if they had handled it appropriately, if it was a problem, if my property in the corner of that facility where no one ever walks and no one ever goes and no one ever does one thing in that corner near bicycles, if it was a real problem, then a professional person would simply say, hey, I've noticed that you've left some things here. Do you mind if you could move that to somewhere else? We don't really like it in this point, particular spot. Or they could have left me a note to say, Hey, notice that you're using our corner to prepare for your departure like a lot of people who live in our community. Would you mind moving it along a little bit more? But instead, they monstrously stalked me. They monstrously observed me. They monstrously did this because I woke up in the middle of the night and there was some woman who I couldn't see with short hair staring around the corner at me. But they stole my bedding. They stole my bed. They took away memory foam. How dare they think they had the right to touch anything I own without speaking to me? This is the vileness of the land. That we have maintenance people that go into facilities and touch our property and literally steal things. And then we go looking for them and we can't find them. I've stolen nothing. Everything I've received came from God's grace. That someone didn't need something anymore and put it in a trash can. Sometimes in a plastic bag to keep it clean. Other times just in the trash can because they know that the impoverished looks for things. It's a loving kindness what those people do. And we have the right to receive what the Lord puts out for us. Whenever I needed a bag, I get the bag I need for that moment of time. But in life we have moments of time to prove who we are in the world. And you and I don't have any right to empower ourselves over another human being ever. We don't have the right to their legal name. We don't have the right to their legal records. We don't have the right to their medical documents. We don't have a right to any aspect of their life insurance policies, their regular insurance policies, their car insurance, anything. Their bank accounts, nothing. We don't have the right to it. 
if you've been given the opportunity, it's because you were trusted in that moment. But trust can be lost in seconds. We build trust in moments and we can lose it in seconds. In your lifetime, you must decide who you are in this world. And as I continue to improve my audio cast, I hope you'll continue to listen because the Lord has a plan for my life and it's going to soar. And the people who've been attacking my life, harassing my life, stealing from me, putting their paws on me in the middle of the night, are going to federal prison. I will ensure that those involved in the mobbing of my life go to jail. In the name of the Lord, I produce an audio cast. What do you do in the name of God? You see, it's in the name of God that we go to people and we serve them. We don't go to people in the name of God to harm them. In Jesus' name, I close this cast. Thanks for listening.